Hey guys, it's Johnny again. Um, this video is a sort of response to um, Steve uh, Headbanging Zulu UK. Uh, I think he's got UK on the end still. Um, it was the the question he was asked: uh, Is there such a thing as rare heavy metal records now? Um, well. In my opinion, um, there still are rare heavy metal records. Um, this is a this is one that's um, you know I haven't come on here to do my video and because uh, I never plan out my videos very much, I do it spare the moment. So you have to bear with me. Um, I know I know Steve um, said there is isn't so much uh, really um, a rare record really rare records um, I kind of disagree because um, in some aspects uh, there are rare records in what I collect um, and it all depends on what you collect um, yes it's easier because of the internet the internet has made the whole collecting thing so much easier and I agree with him there uh, yes it is easier for the younger generation to be able to get into music and collect what they want to collect and and to get it the same day the next day or whatever whereas back in the 80s late 80s when I started collecting um, it was so difficult um, but collecting the the records uh, at the start of you know when I first started was very hard yes it was limited to funds um, that I had because I was so young um, I wasn't old enough to have a job um, so I just got uh, money that I Earned from cleaning cars from my grandparents, and um, what else? Uh, so yeah, it was it was really tough to get records um, that way. Um, so I had to sort of use the funds and have to. If you go into a record shop, or you know, at the start I was buying cassettes, so mainly cassettes were the first thing and the cheapest thing to buy um for me so but to buy my collection i'd have to if i saw 10 albums that i really wanted i'd have to th really think about the one i wanted to buy um but obviously there'd be people out there that were much better off than me and they would be able to go out and probably buy all those 10 albums in one go so that was the limitations i had the other limitations was I didn't know about a lot of the bands because we only had magazines to go through uh, you, and you know I'd buy the cheapest magazine just to find out information on certain bands um, so at the time everything was rare to me um, and I think uh, even on another discussion uh, which I've had with another VC member, music community member, um, <clears throat> they had pointed out that um, it was, you know, we didn't we didn't really have, um, especially in the UK, we didn't have MTV, we didn't have all these chan out channels on TV to show us. Uh, all this music that was coming out I didn't I didn't even know of some of these bands until the early 90s uh, when I started watching programs like War Power uh, Noisy Mothers which was the same thing but it changed the name uh, slightly different the format was just a little bit different um, same presenters as well um, so yeah I, I didn't even know about lots of these bands 
Um, so that made it even more rare. Um, so I would go into my record shop. Uh, we only had, we had three record shops. One of them was the main one, which was called number 19. Uh, that was the best one to go in. That was the one I spent hours on end in. Uh, you only had the guys behind the counter to find out if they had that thing in, the record you wanted, the CD, the cassette, um, and I used to get a lot of uh, info from them of what was coming out. If I wanted something that was uh, older, that had been out for years, um, sometimes they'd say to me, well John, go away, find out the catalogue number, and then come back to us, and I'll be like, hang on a minute, you're the record shop, surely you've got a catalogue number for, for the records I want, uh, and I'd have to, I'd be going into, um, you know, the shops thinking, are they going to know what I'm after, are they, uh, sorry I've got, uh, my battery's going low, I'm just going to go get my charger, hang on a sec, right back, yeah, my phone was going to die again, um, so yeah, uh, yeah. So I'd have to go into the record shop. Um, you know, I'd go in there twice a week, um, looking through um, CDs, records, cassettes, to try and find, you know, the stuff um, that was coming out. And it wasn't until actually, I'll go back a bit. Um, we also had two other record places and that would have been uh, Woolworths but they only sold uh, a small amount um, of things uh, and things that were popular um, number 19 was more specialised um, and they had a lot more stock in um, the other one was very early on was um, Boots the Chemist they had an upstairs and they used to sell seven inch singles that were in the charts. They had like the top 40 seven inch singles. And then they had a, a, an array of CDs and cassettes. And that was like the first time I ever saw like Iron Maiden covers. And I was thinking, wow, <laughs> awesome. Who are they? <laughs> that was uh, crazy. Um, but yeah, um, so obviously a lot of you will know where I live um, because I've said it before. I live on an island called Guernsey, it's 25 miles around it, um, so yeah, 9 miles by 3 I think, or 9 by 4, um, very small, I might as well be living on the moon, to be quite honest, when it comes to um, uh, getting uh, anything that's uh, well, at the time, anything um, that was sort of not in the charts was deemed impossible to get hold of. Uh, yeah, the record shop, number 19, was, it would hold probably two or three albums by a band that I was into. And that would be it. And it would be like the most popular album. Uh, and then a couple of strays, <laughs> as I would call them. Um, so yeah, you'd go in, there'd be like, say, Europe, the band Europe. You'd have the final countdown. Um, you would have had Wings of Tomorrow on cassette. And that would have been it. There wouldn't have been the first album. I never saw the first album for till the mid-90s. Okay, the very first Europe album I never got my hands on until the mid-90s. My friend at school had it, kept promising he was going to record uh, a copy onto cassette for me, never bothered. And I thought, have you actually got it, mate, or are you just full of crap? So, like Steve said, there was always the, the thing with people trading cassettes or copying them for your friends and or listening to the radio and pressing record and trying to record the songs off of the radio, which with Europe you wouldn't have got uh, the early stuff um, so yeah uh, that's that's what it was like for the early uh, the late 80s for me 
um, these bands, like I'd read them in magazines and I'd be like, who are they? Wow, they look really cool. So, but trying to get their stuff in the record shop was, it, everything was like holy grail for me. Um, that's why the mid 90s it picked up. I was able to uh, convince the record, the people in the record shop to actually buy me stuff because I was quite a regular in there. Uh, so with me coming in and going, yeah, can you get me that album? They would do it for me because I was always in there buying. They knew my reputation of, yeah, always buying. And once I bought everything that they'd got for me, it was sort of sealed the deal that I was not gonna mess them around. So, um, yeah, I, I would go in and I'd buy loads of albums. I'd buy three or four albums in the 90s uh, a week. Um, and then I'd buy CD singles, I'd buy record singles. Um, if uh, an album came out, I'd buy the normal version, I'd buy the deluxe edition. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, my... Um, I wouldn't then when they stopped you know it was hard to get all the records actual vinyl records that was when I was like oh no oh well I'll just have to buy the CD singles um, that come out for that for on that um, you know when they were the CD where the singles were released um, but I'd always say to myself right if I buy the deluxe of that and I buy the one and two CD singles that came out of that and that. Later on in life, I won't have to try and source them and then have problems trying to get them because living on this the island I live on, it is so hard to get hold of anything that's rare. Um, so, yes, it, because of where I live, because of actually funds and stuff that was always made records really rare for me nowadays the rec records are still rare um everybody says to me oh john my god you've got that and you've got that how how have you managed to get that we can't get hold of that it's because i've collected over the years and i've kept it um there's been a few odd things i've flogged and i regretted it but the majority of all my collection is stuff that I've kept, um, even CD-wise. I still own my first CD, uh, even though it's in very poor condition. Um, I, yeah, I regret getting rid of my cassettes. That's the only thing I really regret uh, is getting rid of the cassettes because they're always really cool to, you know, have around uh, to show people nowadays. Um, but there are still so many records that I want that are so hard for me to find in the wild in Guernsey. Um, yes, the internet has made the whole world seem a much smaller place. Uh, that's the benefits of the internet. When I first went on eBay in about 2004, uh, didn't have proper internet um, like a broadband so it was like dial up you know what I mean um, the first time I used or the first month I went onto eBay it was I was like a, a kiddie going to maybe I don't know Lapland seeing Father Christmas for the first time obviously not real Father Christmas um, but yeah, go and see the biggest toy shop ever as a kid was what the internet eBay was like for me. I went on and I was, what do I look up first? I, I was like, oh my God, we're talking about the time when eBay used, people used to sell, you know, some weird stuff. You know, on the on, people would sell weird, really out of this world, freaky stuff on, on eBay. 
Uh, it was not just comical, it was absolutely, yeah, it was insane. But yeah, eBay in 2004 was complete, yeah, completely different to what it is now. Um, but it was like, oh my god, where have, where's this form, where's this been? I, because I didn't own my own PC. Uh, I didn't own my foot. I didn't actually own a, my my first PC. I bought was in two thousand four. Um, proper PC, not this Commodore sixty four rubbish. <laughs> um, my first proper PC to go on the internet I bought in two thousand and four, and it was just like it blew me away what I could do uh, and buy on on eBay. And I remember going, I, like I said before, I was just like, what do I look up first? Def Leppard, White Snake, whoa, huh. It was like, it was it was a whole, um, that time where I got sent all those grails. It was just like killer. And I was buying stuff on there. And um, in my first month, my, the dial up, to dial up onto the internet cost me, 300 pound in that month on the telephone bill i was in a lot of trouble um at the time with um how much the phone bill cost so um yes it was uh, a very amazing experience to be able to get these records that i considered rare even in 2004, because we didn't have, we still didn't have the record shops in Guernsey that would supply that would supply all this old vinyl, these old CDs. They still wouldn't do it. Uh, they couldn't get hold of them, hold of it themselves. So, um, yes, I still consider the stuff that I'm after now rare. I just looked up. David Coverdale's single Hole in the Sky. You can't even get it on Discogs. It's their picture cover. I can get the one without the picture cover. I'm not really fussed about that one so much. I want the one with the Hole in the Sky picture cover. Can't get it on Discogs. Probably can't even get it on eBay. Um, usually Discogs you can get whatever you want. Uh the normal one is about, without a picture cover, is about 20, 24 pound. So 28 euros. Um, I want the picture cover. It doesn't even, you know, that can be 55 euros upwards. Um, if, if I had that, I'd probably roll over and I'd probably pass out on camera. Because it would be so, I'd be so excited. Um, the Def Leppard single with the inner lyrics that there's only the hundred that um, was it lyrics sheet that um, Joe Elliott had printed up at school. Was it at school? No, after sorry, after school, he printed it up while he was working, uh, and it went on to the uh, Def Leppard's very first EP. There's only a hundred copies. Now that can be, I've seen that at up to £2,000. Um, somebody selling one on Discogs for without the lyric thing that was printed up. That's like £500. It's 499 Now, I'd be mental to pay that sort of money. Um, but that is, that is what I class as rare. I'm never going to find one of them in Guernsey. Um, and if they're going for that price in the UK uh, and you know elsewhere I don't think I'll ever own one um, the d original Def Leppard EP looks like this okay like that that's a, a, a fan club reissue that was done in about 1989-ish time I thought it was earlier than that, but it's actually 1989-ish. Okay. Uh, and 
the original comes with the red label. This one's the white one, see? Um, to get an original of that, it's just insane. Um, I will never, ever get one of those. I, I can see it. Unless I find one <laughs> and someone has no clue what they are about to sell me. Um, but yeah, there really are rare records still out there. Uh, but the internet has made it easier to get them. That's my take on rare records. Um, and I'd like to see other people's take on rare records. Not necessarily heavy metal like Steve was asking or had been asked. Um, it can be anything, okay? But I'd like to see people's take and what they think. Think, See if they think that their rare records still to be had. It, it all depends on what you want the most. I've got a record in there that is so rare, so hard to get, right? Before the internet came along. It's so hard to even get, find it on the internet. And then all of a sudden I found it. Um, it took me about a day of searching to find this record on the internet. And when I did find it, I managed to get one, managed to find one on Discogs. Is only, the only thing this band ever released is by some British band that is into, is like from around the early 90s. Um, uh, called Naughty Naughty the band now they only released this one thing it was an EP 12 inch and I think it was that was the only thing they released can't find anything else by them I actually own it, it's got three songs on it um, I think it was three yeah, something like that and um, it was so people were saying how, how rare it was and then I managed to find one on Discogs for like about two quid. And I was like, oh no. <laughs> but it's still very rare because there's not many of them around. So um, it all depends on what you really, you know, really, really want. And the ones I really want are still insanely priced. There you go. See you later.